Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from Mother's Basement, and today we are checking out 86 makes Mecha Warfare look. I can't see the full name. I wanted to react to this for ages, but I just hadn't finished 86, and I've just finished 86 now, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I stopped watching because I think there was a break in between episodes, and it just threw me, and then uh, I, I clocked on that it, it ended, so. Finished it, emotional, cried a lot at the end. Uh, I, I read the comments on Crunchyroll that like the story does actually continue in like light novels and stuff, so I am hoping that's going to be a second season. That would be boss, but let's see what Mother's Basement has to say on 86. I thought this was absolutely awesome, man. It really took me by surprise. Let's get into it. In 1979, Mobile Suit Gundam revolutionized mecha anime by asking what the borderline magical super robots of Mazinger and Getter Robo might look like if they were built by real human militaries for real human wars. I also do know why, what the term 86 is. It, 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 I started a job at a cocktail bar uh, just before watching this, and then the term 86 was thrown at me, and I never understood it. And it was like to, you know, when it's gone, and then it was actually a military um, number given for when, like, some uh, a, a group is just is just gone, it's just KO'd. So uh, I like that that number is used as obviously they are the 86 that are thrown and just die. Anyway. Heavily armed and armored and constructed from standard mass-produced components, mobile suits made the interstellar future of warfare feel depressingly believable and mm. tantalizingly tangible, especially if you were into building the model kits. And that inspired the highly merchandisable model, vision of the future like... eventually cemented Gundam as one of the most successful and influential anime of all time. Gundam Wing is just awesome, and then Endless Waltz, the movie they finished off, class, and then you've got Gundam Z, Gundam Z Destiny. Like, the Gundam series is boss. They do tell really good stories, like... By some metrics, the most. But that was a long time ago, mm. a pre-AVA world. In 2021, the most popular giant Ooh. robots have got... I still need to watch so the final one, and I'm going to do that. That they're not even... That's going to be... Right, so my list of finishing things off. That, I, I just need to watch the final movie, which is on Prime, and then I'll watch his, his video on that. ...than robots anymore. Though, aesthetics aside, Attack on Titan is basically just a Gundam story where yeah. it slowly dawns on you that the thing at the start wasn't the colony drop, and also the guy you thought was the Amaro might actually be the Char. And if you think about it, it <laughs> kind of makes sense that Gundam's plot structure would be its most enduring legacy. The original anime's commentary on the murky nature of war and the destructive influence of the military-industrial complex is as relevant today as it ever was, oh, yeah. but its bipedal humanoid mecha designs and the tactics built around them feel nearly as quaint and retro-futuristic as Tetsujin 28 was wow. in the 80s. Real Robot is no longer a sci-fi subgenre, it's simply an accurate descriptor oh, of okay. military hardware that's currently in use or in development in the real world. All of us have a solid notion from viral videos of science tweets yeah, messing about around with them, what yeah. super fighting robots will look like in the future, and Gundams just ain't it. Fuchikomas are. In Scary that light, the return of super stuff, robots man. makes perfect sense. If your bipedal humanoid mech is going to be conceptually ridiculous, no matter how much of the supply chain for its elbow servos you've worked out in your head, and Gundam already owns that niche anyway, you may as well just make it a giant monster that's also your mom and have some fun uh with it. Though, of course, there Eva. was also <laughs> always the option of simply telling a realistic robot war story where the robots don't look like big metal dudes. Which is exactly 86. where 86, the Here we debut go. novel of Asato Asato, adapted for the screen by A1 Pictures and director Toshimasa It's Ishii, so good. Uh. 86 fully embraces that animalistic Boston Dynamics aesthetic in its mechanical design, yeah. taking cues from the arthropod kingdom to build a platoon of lightweight, highly maneuverable scorpion tanks, which it then pits against an endless swarm of AI-driven ants, spiders, beetles and so on known as the legion, legion. a oh. drone swarm born from the festering corpse of a recently ended empire that tried and failed to suppress a popular uprising using ai war warfare equal 
Like, it, the design, though, does remind me of the, the, the things. It does remind me of, um, you know, the things in Ghost in the Shell. Uh, mainly standalone complex where they have those robots to help them out and they run around they can get inside and that it, it's got a very similar design to it and i think actually before ghost in the shell it was new dominion tank police that the actual original design was used in and then because it's the same guy that did ghost in the shell and then used that but uh... fully suited for battle in wide open wastelands and the close quarters of urban combat zones 86's wall crawling insect-esque mechs open up a massive range of new tactical possibilities for the right and animators coordinating its battles to explore while mm. introducing subtle new technical intricacies to troop movement and positioning that make those battles feel crunchy and believable. If you're the kind of person who enjoys running tape measures between tiny, overpriced resin statuettes in elaborate, lovingly handcrafted battlefield dioramas, you are gonna have a good time with this show. Okay. And 86's action is just as fast-paced, frenetic, it's so and boss. in both a physical and emotional sense as any of your favorite shonen bro-downs, so even if you're not, you're still probably gonna have a good time with it. Followed by a really bad time most of the time. Yeah. The good kind of There's bad. a lot of um oh, no. there's a lot of emotion should all bad times, but it adds to the story, man. It's oh I cried so many times watching 86. Uh -huh. With its massive cast of pilots and the mass-produced, oh. standardized look of their machines, you wouldn't expect 86 to show a lot of personality through its mecha, and design-wise, that is certainly true. Each juggernaut bears its own distinct insignia, like the nose art on the, the old bomber plane, but apart from that, they're largely identical until they start moving. Every pilot has their own style. Yeah, they do their own thing. Yeah, that you can you know who's doing what. It's great, craft yeah. Are animated moving through the battlefield. Watching them fight and watching them relax in the precious out of vehicle interludes between battle, you quickly get a sense for who each member of the Eastern Front defending <sighs> Spearhead Squadron is. And that really needs to happen quickly, because most of them don't get to stick around. No, them. they're not allowed for a long time. The Republic time. of San yeah. Magnolia, for which the squadron fights, doesn't consider any of its many mech-piloting child Those soldiers people. to actually be citizens, or even human for that. Yeah, like, don't... Because it, oh, it's, it's been so long since I watched the beginning, but isn't it? Like, they, they tell the, the, the public that, like, they just got mechanized, like, squadrons just fighting the robots so it's basically not even people in there but there is people in there but they don't consider them people because they are from the 86th district matter. state doctrine reserves that label and residents in the nation's 85 districts for a silver-haired silver-eyed race known as the alba all other ethnic groups in the country collectively known as colorata are officially considered to be unevolved subhuman pigs and forced to live outside the protective walls of the republic in the no man's land of the 86th district hmm. hence the numerical slur by which the people and the show are referred to 86. that term is considered impolite though the official terminology is processors so named because the official line the Republic feeds its citizens is that their unmanned drone yeah, army right, so has I was managed right. to yeah, fend yeah. off the Legion for years with zero San Magnolian or human casualties. Uh -uh. A duty the processors <laughs> reluctantly yet also proudly perform as the last line of defense for what may well be the last bastion of humanity on their entire planet. It is tempting to call that concept a mix of Gundam, Iron-Blooded Orphans, and... I need to watch Titan, that. But okay. that's a very reductive comparison that misrepresents just how much of 86 is its own incredible thing. Of course, some Albans are involved in the war effort, but they take mm -hmm. up strictly managerial, by and large ceremonial positions. Yeah, like, the why bother when we've got all these people fighting for us? Decaying command structure. These Alban handlers provide minimal tactical Handler support to processors <laughs> on the ground and under the Legion's radio-blocking robo-fly swarms through an experimental sense-sharing psychic network called Pararade. 
Still, a few Alba do try to go above and beyond and do whatever they can for the poor people under their command, and none of them try harder than the record-settingly young She's officer amazing. who's assigned to lead Spearhead Squadron as the series kicks she is off, so Major sick. Vladelena Milize. Young enough to still be a true believer in the Republic's ideals, yet experienced enough to know how many lies and corpses the nation is truly built upon, Lena's mm. goal is to end the oppression of the 86 entirely, but before that, she strives to help the processors under her command complete their service terms alive and earn their citizenship. Which is actually impossible because the Republic yeah, they always can't sends do it. its soldiers on suicide missions right before their terms Hence, are up. Hence, 86, she they're done. Know that yeah. yet. Those naive ideals come crashing up against a cold, uncaring reality the when Reaper. Lena starts talking to Shine Nozen, aka Undertaker, the leader of Spearhead Squadron, whose ominous call sign seems at first to be an allusion to all of the handlers he's purportedly driven to depression and suicide yeah they go movies. mad in truth though it refers to the mission he's undertaken to record the names of every lost comrade on the battlefield and remember them even when his nation won't also to put a bullet in every one of their brains so they don't get recycled into process yeah units for the legion Damn and it, forced to loop through the memories of their dying moments for all eternity Shine's mysterious sixth oh, sense allows the him to hear the screaming voices oh, no, of those black <laughs> I mean, it looks very similar to the and ending scene. the para-raid system, his squad mates and Lena are forced to share in that nightmare. Yeah, they're going to hear everything. The reason everything, the big uh... evil robot army harvests human brains is to get around the planned obsolescence their creators built into them. Their standard CPUs are designed to expire six years after activation, which the Republic Brass has kind of been banking on as their... Yeah, they really hope that that's going to work. <laughs> ...expectation that it'll be over in two years is why they've been chewing through processors and equipment at the rate they have, why the only 86 left to fight are teenagers, and why San Magnolia is ultimately doomed to be swallowed whole by the still-swelling increasingly intelligent and unpredictable legion forces mm. and everyone lena wants to protect 86 and alba alike share in that fate that's not the only harsh truth shine and his Excuse squad me. of lovable misfits force her to confront though lena makes an earnest effort at getting to know the soldiers under her command she does she really does all chat about anything from their days to the last battle to what pets they have around the base if you're curious they have a cat with way too many kitty eggs, and a dog named fido who doesn't look like a dog but trust he's me, amazing that is a dog a yeah, very good definitely dog. The he's a great dog, dog. yes knowing the kind <laughs> of anime this is that should worry you a lot Aww. anyway Though the squad doesn't think too highly of their commander, they do indulge her in this, which she takes in her extreme naivete as a sign of their warming up to her. But the truth is, they're worlds apart. She lives in a well-kept fortress. She's the 86 looked after. live on the battlefield. And though they're the same age as Lena, they are unmistakably young men and women, while she is still but a smart, outspoken child. Yeah. And as their friends begin dropping like flies and the white pig princess feigns sharing in that grief like she could ever really be their comrade while she's sitting in the safety of her pristine little first district castle, their pushback quickly <sighs> escalates from fucking with her to trying to challenge her outright and then after the girl he was slice of life actually peeking at down by the pond mere hours ago is lost to a tactical oversight theo one of the platoon leaders just fucking loses it yeah accusing her of looking down on them just as much as any of her more openly racist co-workers of it is racism using them to like, satisfy uh... her own ego which hurts lena's feelings for a lot of reasons not the least of which being that it's kind of true. Sure, Theo could have been way nicer. He could have been nicer about it, the situation, but, but... Nothing he said was actually uncalled for. Mm. Yeah, she was being a little friendly yeah, he wasn't too, wrong. and trying a little harder for her squad, doing extra homework to give them an extra edge in battle and whatnot. And she made a point of never using that nasty slur. 
But at the same time, she did always call them by their call signs. She never bothered to learn their Got their natural names, names right? Never even thought about it, because huh. that's just San Magnolian military protocol, and it never occurred to her how literally dehumanizing that rule would feel from the other end. Mm. Lena was sincerely trying everything she could think of to be a good, not racist person, but she still ended up doing quite a serious racism because she failed to recognize how deeply ingrained racism is, is into the customs yeah. and policies that she's been raised to take for granted. Like she's grown that up with it, That doesn't make yeah. her a bad person, but intentionally or not, she did seriously wrong the soldiers in her charge, and as a result, she owes them a serious, one-sided apology before oh, yeah. she can get back to her serious work of fighting Alban oppression, now with a greater sense of clarity as to how that really works, and having earned just the tiniest shred of actual respect from those in her command. Well, it's pretty clear that Shin, the man she talks to most, Shin. feels a little more God. than just respect for her. Though he's also a little too addled by all the Legion ghosts screaming their just dying constantly shouting at him. Yeah. into his brain, plus the day-to-day -day business of not getting blown up, to think of her as much more than a voice he really enjoys hearing from time to time. I digress, though. 86 explores through its world building not just how racism divides and hurts people, not just the consciously hateful attitudes that drive the worst of it, but the way those attitudes, assumptions, and divisions get baked into culture and law and become effectively invisible to those who benefit from and help perpetuate them. Silver supremacy is literally woven into the very fabric of the symbol of the Republic, yeah. her five-colored flag. What was meant to represent the nation's ideals instead reveals the hypocrisy behind it's very Its central stripe, it, yeah. representing brotherhood, is the white of Alban hair and eyes. Mm -hmm. The freedom, equality, and justice that its oh, other this is I like was this. never for all. And even among so-called true humans, it was never going to be evenly distributed. The fifth gold stripe What's represents the nation's noble class that ah. survived the fall of its monarch mostly intact and assumed most seats of power in the new republic after the dust from the revolution had settled. Hmm. And to this day, those nobles are the only Albans who even in wartime, get to enjoy luxuries like fine pastries and oh, cakes made nice. with real <laughs> fruit. This is, in my opinion, one of the most accurately complex yet easily comprehensible models of how modern systemic racism works, who it benefits, who it really benefits, and how those issues intersect with and feed the military-industrial complex of any anime or piece of fiction period I've seen in a long time. Mm. And what's truly remarkable about it is how seamlessly it folds those ideas into its narrative, making them entirely about its characters, the forces that have shaped them and now stand between them and their goals. Like the themes of Cowboy Bebop that mm. we discussed a few weeks back, this never feels like political preaching, just an interesting, nuanced complexity of a well-developed fictional world. World. That's not the only thing 86 has in common with Cowboy Bebop, either. Its characters have a similar casual chemistry between them, and it draws on a rich vein of broad cinematic knowledge to convey different moods and ideas with wholly different cinematic genres from episode to episode and scene to scene. And boy, 86 sure does love those tactile cockpit interfaces that oh, yeah. I love so much. Though that's also something it has in common with Gundam, and it has far more in common with that series. Sitting squarely on the operatic end of the space music spectrum, even without the space part. Beyond showing us a world we can believe real people really live in, these details ultimately serve to build a comprehensive picture of an ever-evolving theater of war that threatens to tear that world to pieces. And while it may seem like I've talked an awful lot about this show's plot and the granular details of that world, the truth is I've only shown you pieces so far. 
barely scratched its surface. There's so much to it. I could talk your ear off about different Legion models, the fascinatingly, believably flawed AI model that drives them, the mechanical subtleties of the juggernauts used to fight them, and their later, slicker Season 2 upgrade, which I need all the model kits of right now. There's a great deal more to discuss about the Alban Republic and its culture beyond the oppression that built it, too. Not to mention spoilers upon spoilers worth of world building beyond that. Yeah, San would... Magnolia yeah. wasn't always the last human nation on Earth, after all. And we're not on Earth, for that matter. This is its own fully realized fictional world with a rich, complex history that stretches well beyond San Magnolia's borders and well into the past, which at one point encompassed many different cultures and models of governance, it is nice learning little trickly bits as you go along as they see things. Easily add new wrinkles to the seemingly simple refugee on drone proxy war thing the Republic is currently waging. If they still exist, of course. Please ignore any Attack on Titan comparisons I might have made earlier that might possibly answer that mystery for you. Mm. I want to make it clear that I am not making these Gundam comparisons lightly. I'm not as into the Universal Century as some of my fellow weebs, but I'm acutely aware of how sprawling and intricately detailed that setting has always been, and how much it's grown since its inception. As a four-year-old light novel franchise, 86 really has no way of comparing to those literal decades of world four building years, in man. either its scope or its scale, of course, but... I'll be damned if it doesn't have an answer ready in dialogue or sometimes just background details for every dang question its plot's given me cause to ask in its 18 episodes of runtime so far. Even oh. counting Mushoku Tensei, wait, this wait, wait. slow crumbling... So, he's not... So, as... The... Oh! Okay. So, he's done this video when the break came. Apparent... Right, okay. Interesting. So he's not. Ah, oh, he's not going to touch on the ending. All right. Marble white metropolis and the gritty hmm. yet colorful post-collapse Shinkaiscapes that surround it is easily the most believable and immersive anime world I've visited in 2021. And as our world is being pulled deeper and deeper into the quagmire of AI augmented drone executed perpetual warfare, where rich democracies pay for their luxuries with the blood of others elsewhere in a different world, the things it has to say about war and segregation are as relevant today as the Federation, Xeon, and Anaheim Electronics were in the 80s and still are. But most importantly, as a work of art, above and beyond all of that, 86 populates that world, wages that war, with compelling and complexly realized, deeply human characters. It speaks to fundamental, powerful emotions that we all feel in war and peacetime alike. Before it is a thoughtful exploration of warfare or an immersive world, 86 is just a plain old damn good story. One that's told exceptionally well by true masters of their respective crafts. 86 marks Toshimasa Ishii's first solo outing as a director, but you wouldn't guess it to look at it. Its shot composition, plot structure and pacing, sense of atmosphere and deliberately devastating sudden shifts in style and tone all speak to the sensibilities of an experienced master, and with good reason. Ishii has served as assistant director to both Mamoru Hosoda on Mirai and Tomohiko oh. Ito on Erased, where he personally oh, what an anime, recorded man. both Yo. episode two, you know, the one with that park scene so good I felt compelled to write Erased a video is about so it, boss. and episode 12. You know, the finale that condensed an entire extra thick mm. manga volume into 23 minutes. Oh. An ill-advised, but nonetheless impressive feat of visual storytelling that again speaks to his immense skill as a director as does his work building tension in episode six of the promise no and emotional catharsis <gasps> oh, episode eight. what an anime july <laughs> april's so good ah. she's learned from the best of the best and he's got serious range as a director and he puts every bit of that to work here, juxtaposing expertly crafted scenes of levity and slice-of-life frivolity with intense action and deeply painful tragedy, often separated from each other by mere seconds. 
and all conveyed with sharp, evocative cinematic framing. Even as the Alba bury their heads in ignorance of the war Excuse outside me. their walls, the show refuses to let us forget how little truly separates the two worlds they've constructed, mm. what the great San Magnolian piece truly costs, and how fragile it truly is. 86 isn't just an impressively put together production, every facet of its style supports its substance. That's not just on Ishii, of course. 86's adaptation shares its lead writer, Toshia Ono, with the promised Neverland, Land of the Lustrous, and Gachamon crowds. Right. Its art director brought the worlds of Little Witch Academia, Kakegurui, and Now and Then Here and There to life. Its director of photography gave us the immaculate compositing of Kaguya-sama, Love is War. Oh. The overwhelming and chaotic soundscapes of its battlefields were created by Jin. This man is literally everywhere, Aketagawa. And the accompanying musical punch is delivered, or dropped if you will, by the inimitable Hiroyuki Sawano Here's in Tom. conjunction with Nanatsu no Taizai and Attack on Titan the final seasons, Kota Yamato. Nice. If you were playing anime production fantasy football with industry legends, <laughs> That's you would be used, hard yeah. pressed to put together a more capable production squad. And they all have been giving it their all every week, even through some self-evidently challenging production circumstances, to consistently do this story the justice it deserves. And even still, it's not just them. The visual commentary compilation that dropped as episode 17.5, where three of the main actors it. got to pick out some of their favorite scenes to hmm. watch and discuss together, reveals an astounding depth of understanding in regards to what makes each of these characters tick. The director clearly had involved conversations with even the supporting cast members about the subtle. That's very cool, getting involved like that. And that effort pays off in every single performance we hear in the Japanese dub. Though the English dub is no slouch either. Not watch the English I dub, can be honest. enjoyed watching the series through as far as it's available in both languages. Also, credit where it's due. That visual commentary episode is one of the best things any anime has ever done for an unplanned recap. Oh. It both made me feel rewarded for watching it as a fan and sold me some model kits. Cool. Oh, they do look boss. Whoa. That looks sick. Lead on that that future. looks awesome. Going that extra mile just for a recap episode is the mark of a series that seriously cares. respects its fans. Yeah, yeah, really cares. aims to deliver the best experience it possibly can to us week after week, no matter what. In a truly incredible, almost unrivaled year for anime, 86 manages to stand as one of the best of the it's, best. A I loved it. anime of the year contender, or at least a thoroughly deserving runner-up, even next to Odd Taxi and Ranking of Kings. And hopefully Odd Taxi was so good as well. I need to watch the movie. Ah. Many more years exploring in even more depth. Maybe with like a little licensed urban scale tabletop tactics game where there's little magnets on the bottom of the minifigure mech so they can climb on walls and like shoot dudes from the sides of buildings and stuff. Hmm. Just spitball in here, but please, someone make that. I would play it literally yeah, forever. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm a bit obsessed with this show, and if you are too, I'd love Spots to hear why it. in the so comments much. below. And if you're not, well, if anything I've said today has even slightly intrigued you, you will be. Yeah, 86 was boss. Like, I loved it. It's a shame that he recorded that video before, like... It actually ended. It would have been nice to see what he thought about the ending. Uh, but like I said at the beginning, apparently there's light novels where like it continues, so it isn't actually the ending of the story itself. Uh, I would love to see it continue. And yeah, just 86, get get onto it. It's, it's boss. It seems a bit strange at first, but once you get into it, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's great in the end. I, I, I cried a lot like the last two episodes, but yeah. Uh, Anyway, thank you to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video upload, link in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month slash support channel. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you guys for that. Well, thank you all. <sighs> Sorry. For watching. What did you guys think of that? What did you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, already. leave comments down below. Let me know. I should watch some future videos. See you guys. All you guys. Next damn. Bye.